one thing that I did not do ever was I did not quit. If you can't concise your words into single pointers, you've lost the battle. It's not you who are getting sold. It's client's dream that needs to be sold to himself. Whatever happens to you is 10%. How you react to it is 90%. Quick uh, introduction in case if you guys have missed she is a co-founder and global CEO at Graves Digital. She's been panelist, she's been jury, and the best part is uh, she's been awarded by Business uh, World 40 Under 40. She has been also in top 50 influential uh, women in 2022 and 23, yeah. two years in a row. So firstly, before we begin this session, I think uh, we should thank her for spending a Saturday afternoon with us. So a huge round of applause. Thank you guys. And thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> Pleasure. All right. So uh, let's get started. And before we actually start, uh, let's hear from her as to uh, what's her story. Because uh, when I was actually uh, going through her LinkedIn first time and I realized that she comes from a tech background. Okay. She started working with Zoom followed by Interactive Avenues. I think she worked for around four, four and a half years in the industry. And then she transitioned and she's like, okay, I'm starting my own company. And she started by uh, her own venture, which is Grapes today. And I think it's been over 11 years that she's running the show. So uh, Shraddha, why don't you walk us through your story in the industry and how it has been? You want sugar-coated or you want honest stories? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I belong to a, a Maru family. Maru girls here? No. So you won't relate. So let me change the story. <laughs> okay. So it was difficult growing up. It wasn't easy. You know, typical Maru family. Parents wants to get married, settle down, make gold rotis and alu gobi and some shit. I don't know for what. Uh, but uh, I think fate had something else for me. And uh, I was uh, there in engineering college. I was good with math, science, logic was very clear. So was in computer science, got placed with Sapient, um, was supposed to go international with them. But then uh, like every other stupid teenager was in love with a boy uh, and uh, decided to stay back for him and luckily got admission in MBA. Like every other teenager, bheer chal to chali rehti. So you had to do engineering, then you had to do MBA, unlike Amir Khan. Uh, so we did MBA. But I think uh, when you say na, something happens good to you and it's good to be there. Uh, I think uh, both of them were really good for my career because uh, engineering taught me a lot of logic, right? Because you know how to make logical decisions. How can you do excels? How can you do maths? Um, today, if a person in the tech team comes to me and says, I four days. I was like, I will do it for four hours. If you don't I'll do it for you. Right? Um, I think that's what uh, logic does to you. Um, so then I started doing a lot of research on culture, on, uh, on feminism, on patriarchy, um, on other stuff, you know, in life. And I realized there's so much insight today in our culture, in our history, in our heritage that we got really excited. Uh, I think marketing because obviously I was in Micah, it also helped in terms of putting that together. Plus the fact that it was a very bold college, right? Um, I remember I was in a fest back then and there was a big box that you had to pull out things from. And whatever came in your hand, you have to speak for a minute. Okay, and how you have to speak is you have to speak, then pass it on to the next person that was on stage with you. He has to or she has to speak and then it comes back to you and then you have to speak. And I was like, dude, I can't do this. And and. And everybody was looking at me as if some alien, you know, who is trying to become this shy person. And I had to perform. And I think that also helped me in terms of doing a lot of things with a straight face, being in advertising, right? So, uh, right from the way you actually, you know, apart from the fact and no disrespect to what you're being taught in the class, but if you're actually open to learn from what's happening around you, you read between the lines, right? Learn from each other, right? I remember I was... Uh, gone to the first trip, very excited, one full bus of Mikan's went. And then uh, I saw everybody literally drinking and on each other, you know. And I was, I started crying. I said, Mom, where did you send me? And you know what happened when you're exposed to these kinds of things? 
you all of a sudden start viewing a different side without being judged yes you feel a little stuck you feel afraid but then what gives you that entire contentment of being a little more someone who can just hold yourself and still move on right and that became very important um all of that happened and then i landed up in my first job it was pre placement offer despite of a recession period with wiscraft uh wiscraft is ifa watts they are the parent company who does ifa watts there so they own ip and i was the first management trainee that they hired uh one thing that i did not do ever was i did not quit right um and then after that my my regional head of wiscraft recommended me to a digital industry because i was managing digital pieces for a lot of brands like i was managing it for uh grey goose vodka for bacardi for ifa awards i remember writing imran khan's description like how he gave an intro for me i gave an intro for him for ifa saying the the cute boy with a puppy eye <laughs> and my boss was like Are you going to call him a puppy eye in ifa i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> again i got a bashing for that <laughs> so um and then uh, interactive web news happened and in that entire journey i think my boss was awesome that uh, he's working he's actually heading a sense today in the industry um great guy i think he had been a great mentor but the thing that really worked in interactive web news nobody liked me except for the my boss because everybody was like why are you working so much matlab i never used to go for lunches team lunches i just used to kept working i used to say raise my hand for everything that was offered in the monday meeting saying i'll do it Uh, and they were like you already have too much on your plate i said i'll still do it it doesn't matter and uh, i think i realized that i was uh, putting too much effort when uh, i delivered a very successful campaign my uh, company head came to me and said that she's the only person who brought so much revenue single handedly from cola campaign and after the cola campaign was finished i told my boss that you know what i'm not going to come to office tomorrow i think i've slogged myself enough and uh, i'll take a leave tomorrow and he was like yeah 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 please please take a leave and by 12 pm i was in office i was like i don't know what else to do <laughs> i think i just thought i'll do something but i couldn't do anything else and hence i'm here again and then life kept happening obviously i moved to calcutta because my family was moving back worked there for 3 months uh realized calcutta is not the place for me anybody from calcutta again i have to change my story oh one person hi i so pity you uh, uh calcutta is so slow at least what i have envisioned um so i had to move back to delhi um and there was someone in the office who was again not nice as usual i don't know is something wrong with my face <laughs> somehow some people's not been nice and i think uh, but that's been a great for me I, the critics are always great so i decided uh, he he basically just walked past me and said can i have a a mail every evening from you of what are you doing i said seriously so i was actually I was actually surfing fashion in dot com that time, <laughs> buying some stuff from fashion, and then I got so pissed. Is pissed okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got so pissed that I went to fashion in dot com career section and put in my resume. Um, got a call from them. Uh, very funny. I um, they asked me to join in ten days. I was in Calcutta. I didn't know who to go to and who to tell that I'm going back to Delhi. I've got an offer there. my parents obviously would not agree so i didn't tell anyone seven day came in i have to go in three days now so i went and tell, told my bhavi that you know what i've got an offer and i'm not planning to go it's an offer eighth day came in i told my sister ninth day my dad got to know from my bhavi nine and a half day he is asking me are you going i said no just an offer quarter to 10 day mom is asking you are you going i said no it's just an offer just tomorrow i have my flight and now in the night i'm saying i'm going and they're like what's wrong with you and my my parents were like i don't know why are you born you should be dead by now and and all of that was happening and my sister is texting me you should come inside the room parents are really furious i said you bring me the blanket outside i was sitting sleeping on the sofa and everything and i decided to move right without knowing what will happen to me i said i have to take this punt and uh, i moved um, there worked there for dealsandyou.com for 8 months my boss was awesome he gave me everything possible to learn uh to grow um 
and I was I had a lot of attitude then back then also. I my brother used to run Reliance uh, dealership. Okay, so you remember the five hundred rupees phones? Not your time, no? Or anyone remembers? Okay, the five hundred rupees phone. Yeah. So if somebody used to say anything to me, I used to just drop my phone like this. <laughs> Next day, new phone will come. Doesn't matter. But they used to feel, oh my God, so much anger, Shada Hell. <laughs> Um, these and you happened and then there was I met somebody at an event in Etel and uh, when Etel uh, this uh, marketing head in Etel was looking for somebody so he texted me can you get me some people I said yeah I'll send you a few resumes so I was sending him resumes and then he was like uh, I didn't I'm not liking anyone I said I'm done I can't send you more resumes you should hire me and he was like yeah not a bad idea why don't you come over I said are you mad and you know, I I was always going through a lot of shit with my family because they were constantly asking me to come back to Calcutta. And my boss literally spoke to my parents saying that no, she has so much potential. You can't let her go to Calcutta and just get married. So I was like, no, I can't do this to my boss. I can't come to you. He was like, just come and give me an interview. I was like, okay, fine. The offices were very close. I said, I'll come after office hours if that's okay with you. He was like, yeah, I got selected. Now I don't know what to do uh, again. And I went to my boss. And my boss got to know about it from someone else and he was really furious. He was like, I did so much for you. I was like, yeah, and I'm crying and I'm like, I'm please, I really want to try this. I think it's a great offer. I, it's Airtel. I'm getting head digital engagement as a position. It's huge for me. I want to genuinely try this. And he was like, um, I'm not talking to you. He did not speak to me for three months. Right. And I still quit. I went and did Airtel. Um, did a great job there. I, I was the first one to launch YouTube channel for a brand. Uh, won my Abby for her friends Aruri Hota Hai season two campaign. Um, and then I met my husband, who was actually the founder of Grapes, not me. Uh, he launched Grapes software uh, back in 2009. I met him in 2012. Like a typical uh, duo, we met online. We met through JeevanSati.com. I wanted to date, he wanted to get married. Uh, we decided to get married in December somewhat and then uh, we decided not to work with each other. You know, like let's have one stable income, one person is an entrepreneur. Uh, why does two people want to work together? It's not going to work. Husband, wife, typical problems. But he said, why are you making money for someone else when you can make it for me? I was like, yeah, fair. No, we will get Try it. <laughs> so I uh, joined him, worked with him for six months, realized it's not easy. You can't work with your husbands. Uh, I'm sure he must feel the same. You can't work with your wives. Um, it's not easy for two alpha people in this relationship to be in the same room and want to, you know, have your own point of views. Um, so I got pregnant, went on a sabbatical. I had a short cervix. I had to be on bed. I had to peep and poop on bed also because it was bad for me. Uh, but then it was convenient. I had a laptop on my tummy always. I was working. It's, I missed my sister's wedding. Uh, because I could not go for that. I saw the entire wedding on Skype. And then when I joined back, I said, you know what, I'm going back to the job. I don't think it's working for us. And then he said, uh, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go back to marketing. You know, that's my fervor. I've been doing tech projects with you. It's software at the end of the day. He was like, I'll invest. You start. I said, okay. Nothing like it. You invest then. Who can't enjoy a good money from someone else? <laughs> so I was like, okay. Uh, and I started Grapes Digital. We landed with Marty Suzuki, another very interesting stories. Um, we started with Haku Hudu as an offline agency as their white label partner. Not white label, I'd say like their partner. They introduced us to Marty, so it, it's technically not white labeled. Uh, we did their website. Now they were looking for social agency. So they said, Shada, can you recommend someone? It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I recommend you. But why don't you try me? They said, no, you guys are good with tech, website. You don't know social media. I said, did you look at my resume? But obviously you can't say that to someone. So I said, okay, I'll recommend you a few, but why don't you give me also a chance to pitch? I knew social media, so obviously we pitched, we won that. Then came media buying and planning. Uh, he was like, we need looking for a media planning and buying agency. I said, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll recommend you a few, but give me a chance to, but I didn't knew media planning and buying much. So I got someone from a very large agency to teach me media planning and buying. At, per hour basis in Starbucks. So learned media planning and buying from her, pitched the client, won that business. And then in our, after Maruti happened, I think there was no turning back uh, till we lost the account in 2018. We lost almost 80% of our business because of Cambridge Analytica. 
and I had nothing to do. So I went to Himanshu. I said, let's have the other child that you were talking about. I have nothing else to do. <laughs> I took a break. Um, I had to go on sabbatical again, obviously, because I had short service as an issue. But again, I was working on the laptop. That's why my second child is so aggressive. She heard me always shouting and yelling. Um, and then after that, I think, uh, came back, joined business and decided that we need to go integrated because today, if you look at it, idea is big. You can't just go and say, I am your social agency. So give me your social business. I think those were days were gone. So we had a lot of people from Chael, Hava, so Gilvies of type and asked them to join us as a senior creative team and then started rebuilding the whole piece, uh, pitched more clients, got more clients and here we are. Quite a journey, right? Just uh, every time there was a challenge, he's like, Main karke rongi, <laughs> Yeah, so kudos on that. And uh, while you just mentioned about uh, how you actually ended up getting Marfi Suzuki as client, right? And since then, I think you've uh, dealt with big players like OLX, Mankind, and uh, I think Lacoste was one of your brands. Yeah. So while you were dealing with all these different set of uh, brands, in fact, while you were also working at Airtel, while you also uh, were part of Wiscraft, right? Uh, you would have always encountered that there are multiple problem statements that yeah. keep on coming, right? So at this point in time, uh, to all these audience out here, to all these young marketers, what do you think uh, they should keep in mind as maybe top three or maybe a hygiene essential that should always be there in their like you know mind while they're working for any of the clients out there okay how many of you believe in work-life balance idiots uh sorry not you the topic is idiot um i don't think there's any work-life balance you want to achieve something in there you would better roll up your sleeves and get on to it right uh there's no harm in having work-life balance. But if you are at level zero and you want to get to level 10 uh, without your dad or mom, uh, you need to slog. Yeah, nothing comes for free. So if you look at the journey, right? And the reason I told you multiple things, and if you take out learnings from that, first, have the balls to say yes even if you don't know the job, right? And slog to figure out how will you do it? Because that's the chance that you've got and you might not get that again. Second, nobody learned anything in school and colleges. All you learn, let me tell you the theta formula that you learned in school was not something that is going to be asked in any of these things, right? And I genuinely respect students' life a lot more than our life because I think you fail in one exam, you, you've lost a year. I fail in one which I have not lost anything, okay, except for that client. Uh, but I can just pull myself back again in two weeks, get another client, right? But in, So what you need to learn is very important that when you're slogging, sit down and think through what you are trying to achieve and stay very true to your goal, right? And when you're staying true to your goal, right, with any client, understand what is their basic need and problem. So let's let's say, for example, come, this is my project. OK, I need to convince him uh, to marry me. OK, hypothetically, that's my core project. Yeah, you're up for it, right? He's not up for it only. <laughs> uh, so, so now, uh, if this is the core project, and obviously it's a difficult task. He's like some half of my age. He's not ready. I, I have enough money, uh, right? So now next day I have a presentation with him. I have to convince him, let's say, if he needs to get married to me, right? So what, what should I do, right? First, I need to be very, very clear that I need to get married to him. For what reason? Maybe I want to show him off in my next party with old aunties, right? So my objective is clear, right? But I can't tell that to him. So I need to explain him in his words that what needs to be done for him to get married to me. So my key point is maybe I need to first do research on him to understand what is his liking and preferences, right? That's what you do for brands. You research, you research well. Then I need to look at his competition. Let's say this pretty girl is my competition, okay? And uh, hypothetically, she's interested in the same boy. So I need to figure out what are the gaps in her, right? So let's say I figure out she's very poor. Okay, hypothetically, hypothetically, 
okay um and i figured out let's say um she is looking forward to settle down in us and he's a mama's boy and he's not looking forward to settle down in us right and uh, and the third thing that you guys need to understand is own the kpi so i'm going to tell him that you know what you can go back to her any time but just spend 3 months with me time is something that nobody tangifies right so what are my top 3 things is i need to understand what he is looking at what is her industry gap her in the sense industry gap and give a kpi that give me this chance for a limited time period i'll prove you and then you can make a choice so now i have in the kitty right you can take a seat and not get mad at me <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is that a lot of kids you know in my class or in my office also or in a meeting that i meet them they have not done these three pointers well so if i ask them okay what's the internet population of the country okay what do you think is your brand all about what do you think is they are looking forward to achieve in the next 3 years and then because you guys are gen z another problem <laughs> you guys uh, want to rattle something because you've been asked a question you can't stay silent right so you'll be like i'll rattle something i'll say something but you're not clear in your head so what happens is that you guys are confusing the shit out of the person who's standing in front of you whereas you need to convince that person so if you can't concise your words into single pointers you've lost the battle if you can't say what you wanted to say in 3 minutes in 30 seconds you've lost the battle right so do your research well put five pointers that you think that this should happen for yourself or for the client and then just say those five pointers with examples because we are also storytellers we love storytelling right but if you can't like i told my parents that just give me 6 months to go back to delhi for that job and i'll come back and get married to the boy whoever he wants and i'll come every time you want me to come and see a boy right So I gave them a time frame. I never came back in six months, right? But I gave them a time frame. I gave them whatever they wanted to hear, and I did that, right? Similarly, when I entered a market, we were actually pitching a UK client on an alcohol beverage space, and he said, um, "I'm not looking forward to a marketing agency. I think they are, they don't know shit." And uh, we said, "Hear us. Give us a chance. You have nothing to lose. You're not putting your money. All we are asking for is half an hour, right? We'll do the hard work without getting paid for it." He said, "Yeah, fine." do it and we actually did the hard work we understood the category went and told him three key pointers that you need to do and we got the account yeah so be very clear of what you are doing with your clients it's not you who are getting sold it's client's dream that needs to be sold to himself so stay true to that and don't confuse people convince them wow very nicely answered and i think Bang. The example was bang on on point. Just how these Gen Zs would like to <laughs> actually relate to. And um, in addition to this, uh, just uh, some time back, we were just having chat and we were just talking about how uh, you guys end up like you know uh, frequently changing jobs, oh, or yeah. else you keep on giving interviews. You have multiple opportunities in your hand, and then you are like. sir idhar jao idhar jao ye karu wo karu right so you always have this so uh, shraddha what's your take on uh, like you know this generation changing their jobs very frequently you already been called this generation ah guys it's a great see i understand lifestyle aspiration um do you know the okay you won't know but this is a law that i made for myself it's called the lifestyle upgrade law okay are you guys into fashion do you guys love fashion lifestyle right okay let me tell you this law that i created for myself um let's say what brands are you guys wearing i can see h&m what other brands are you guys wearing yeah zara promotes and mangoes and and stuff like that right uh this is so there is this is the second level brands okay the the brands below this is west side pantaloons and stuff like that right max or reliance mart or something below that is your sarojini nagar that we all i loved going to sarojini nagar 2000 rupees 10 tops your home right uh, back in then huh? now i don't wear sarojini nagar okay? 
So after this, what brand will come? Let's understand. Ted Baker's, right? Armani's, Emporio Armani's, right? Ralph Lauren is a little bit up. LV is again up. After that will come Coach, Michael Kors, right? Tory Boach. Then will come your, let's say, Ralph Lauren's, Louis Vuitton's, Burberry's. Then will come Gucci Prada's. Then will come Amesh, Chanel, YSL and stuff. So this is after that. Laura Piana and other brands which I have also just recently heard because one client came to me. Okay, um, let's understand how much money do you need. Have you who all are good with excels? <laughs> Very good. You should. One thing you should learn is Excel. As for me, otherwise it's very Thank difficult you. to work with me. For <laughs> Thank it's you. so important to learn Excel, yeah. I mean, instead of dunk the word, start writing on Excel. Even if you're writing something that's supposed to be on Word, start writing on Excel. Okay. Put together your monthly expenses, whatever you want to spend on. Okay. So write down your current monthly expenses. You'll write down things like, uh, I want um, to spend on food. Every uh, Wednesday, I want to go to a restaurant. I want to order Zomato thrice. I want to go to the gym. I want to go to shopping and spend 20,000 bucks every weekend. Okay. Put down. Everything you want to spend. I want to go to movies. I want to spend on my boyfriend or girlfriend, let's say 50k a month. You'll get a budget. 2000 se upar ki movie to nahi dekh sakte ho. PVR director cut. So now after you've written this entire expenses, now you've got a number. So I realized that if this is the money that I want, I will be done by the age of 28, 29 and have that salary. What after that? And I had no answers. I don't need more salary. So what am I doing? So what happened when you jump every year, right? You're only jumping for salary because you had no other answer. If one toy this entire FOMO you wanted, oh, everybody says you didn't need to change job in a year. I don't know for what. And secondly, you're doing the same job in the next company. Nothing is changing there also except for few people around you, maybe a cute girl or a cute boy, right? So why did you change this job? And what you realize is because you changed jobs so many times, you were only working at superficial level in multiple brands because you could not go deeper with the same brand, right? When you don't go deeper with the same brands, you're actually solving the same problem every year for other brands, right? What happens when you stick with the brand, whether it is a brand side job or an agency job? You say, I have done last year. I did this also last year. I did this also last year. That is what new can I do this year? Now you're going deeper. Right? But when you change job, you get a new brand. What are you doing? You're applying the same logic that you applied last year. Why oh, did not try all of this thing this for this brand? So you are working at superficial level and eventually because you are smart. You know, you guys know how to present yourself in an interview. It's only a 30 minute interview. If you can't crack that, you're donkeys. Okay. So a 30 minute interview is easy to crack, right? If you've done your maths right, you know what questions will be asked. You can go to 10 places. You can just ask a couple of ex employees to understand what questions will be asked. If you've done your research right, you'll crack that interview. Now, once you crack that interview and you enter that job and then you jump again, you've lost the plot. And by the time, because every time you've jumped, how are you working? You're working like I'll get a 30% appraisal in April. Then I'll take a jump in June or July, right? I'll get another 30%. All of a sudden you are at appraisal of because it's 30 on 30, right? So from a hundred bucks, you move to 170 bucks and value You don't know how to solve a problem of a 170 buck person. Right? In your head, you think you're a marka, Right? But you don't realize that experience brings a lot of value. Depth with the same client brings a lot of value. Right? And then by the time you reach a salary of 24 lakhs, which is a sweet spot right now in digital agency because we don't want to hire people beyond that because clients are not paying for retainers beyond that. How much are your retainers? Your retainers are the same 2, 2 and a half lakh rupees. That was five years back and now, right? So we want younger kids who are at a cheaper cost because I need a client servicing, I need a designer, I need a copywriter. How will I pay for those, right? And then at 24, I you to realize that you're not valued in industry and now you're losing your jobs because you're the first one to be fired. The next employee does not want to hire you at 24, right? And for two years, you'll go into depression thinking, what should you do next? And then you'll think, okay, let me become a freelancer, a consultant, uh, this. So the ideal way to do this is, guys, go deeper with a client for two, three years. Client side, agency side, doesn't matter. But work somewhere for two, three years to go deeper. Once you think I've done everything, 
then switch. And unless you find a boss like me, then you want to change in six months, that's also fair. Right? But where I would like to justify, and I hope I've made a decent answer to it. Because money will come, guys. If you're worth it, no, the money will come. Maybe not the first year. No, maybe you'll feel, oh my God, she earns 12 lakh rupees. I'm still at 8 lakh rupees. She was a dad. I was smarter than her in the class. Guys, it will come to you. Just wait, hold, right? Learn the tactics before jumping onto the money because that money is not going to add anything except for the fact that you are drinking some stupid gin and then you are moving to another hi-fi gin. That's it. And any which I'll call so bad for you. So. Love the answer. Bang on, on point. Because every time that I'm coaching them, on the day one they enter I area and I'm like, job chahiye. Excel <laughs> <laughs> which I and I Excel and PPD are not which again you validated without even me asking that question to that. Again, uh, the point where I constantly ensure and everyone at IRE ensures that like you know, we coach them in a way wherein you stick with a company, you get mad exposure with them. Once you realize that you've done everything, either find something new in on, in that organization or switch, right? So Bang on again, something which uh, I think all these guys would have related. And I absolutely love the example of how she's put up the brands. <laughs> because that's how actually I can relate to because I started like thinking like that. Right. So very like bang on, like correct. I wouldn't say correct, but a thought process which you all should have in mind and you all should think. Because this is absolutely something that will stay with you guys. Okay, and it will keep you grounded also at times. Yeah, you, you just just put together whatever you want. Na. Even if you are deciding on the next marriage, whether this guy is a good investment or a girl is a good investment to get married, or even you want to stay with your parents, or you want to have a child, or you want to move to another city, just write that down. Why do you think it is good? And why do you think it's bad? And just, just do number counting, na, how many pros and cons. You'll have your answer. You don't need to think aloud. <laughs> That's what you teach them? Yeah, I always ask them to take a piece of paper. So generally what happens is... No paper, Excel. Excel, watch a little time. Lagta, na? So uh, what happens is, uh, while they are in their placement model, uh, now they'll come to me, I want to be content. Sir, I want to do BD client servicing both. Sir, I think I'm a performance marketer, but I can also do BD. I'm like, okay, take a piece of paper. Go write down what we taught you, see what industry wants, read few JV, you'll realize what other skill set. Make a list for yourself and then eradicate things that you think yeah. are not something that you can do. And then that's how you'll find your niche. So again, something that uh, we can all take back home today. Yeah, but the process of elimination is very right. So it is not... Putting yourself down. Yeah, it is. Guys, when somebody says, I knew what I wanted to become. 99% of them I like, except for 1% of them who genuinely knew what they wanted to become, right? We all stumble upon things and then we keep moving and we keep changing our course and then we keep moving ahead again. And maybe very honest, I was sitting in a panel and I, this guy had done 27,000 crore rupees in turnover, right? This is off business I'm talking about. And he also told me that how he stumbled upon everything, right? It was not something, even Oyo Room Ritesh, he stumbled upon a hundred things, right? So, but in that process, you didn't knew what you wanted. But if you could write down what you didn't want it, it will always work for you. So the process of elimination becomes way better than the process of selection. So, uh, which brings me to my next question. While we were discussing uh, the brands right now, right? Uh, in a way, uh, a different type of consumer behavior, but again, uh, one way to look at consumer behavior. So in uh, today's digital world, why consumers are constantly changing their mindset because there is a lot of healthy competition out there to select from. Uh, what do you think uh, marketeers here can do to stay ahead of these changes? Or how should they think of adapting something quickly and moving to the next? So I think one thing that the marketeers should be doing is definitely understanding the core issue like a consumer. So if you can't place yourself as a buyer and say, why will I buy this? So hypothetically, let's say, um, anybody wants to come up here? Not getting married to me, come. Okay. Um, let's say I love her golden hoops. Okay. Simple, right? And uh, now you need to tell me three reasons 
we should buy these golden hoops. Why will you wear it? Fashionable workwear. Looks elegant. The color goes with every outfit. Yeah. It gives a professional look. So elegant and professional. So it can be your day wear and your night wear. It must be your need and why should it be your need? So you're saying you have the money, you want to buy a earring and hence there's a need for that. Yeah? Okay? I think the right answer is this goes with my right party wear and professional wear. Yeah, but that's what you think. But these, these are three different reasons that you guys only gave me, right? It goes with my party wear and my professional wear. Okay, it looks elegant and chic because it's not too loud. At the same time, it is also making a statement because it's a little chunky and bold on this on the space. And the first was uh, it's it's fashionable workwear, right? So you you so somewhere if if you look at yourself only, you guys without doing any research gave me three four answers. And between all these three four answers, there was one core answer that it is universal. It can work in your day and night. It looks fashionable for a party dress also and great for a professional dress also. Thank you, girl. Yeah. Now, if that's the answer, okay, did you need an IMRB research center to do this for you? Do you think any influencer who works in the country has KPMG and BCG and, and somebody behind them telling them this is the next content piece you should make? It's a trillion dollar industry, right? Something they must be doing right without going to the research books. What worked in both the cases? So what is your intuition of buying this product, right? So first thing that has genuinely worked for me, for any brand is I put myself as a consumer. So that's my intuition, my gut telling me what is going to be right with this brand, right? Because a lot of time these copywriters and kids will come and say, let's do this idea, let's do this. I said, how will you sell the brand with this? No, no, it looks great. Why does it look great? Will you, and I literally tell you, this post that you made for the client, will you put this on your Instagram handle? If you can't put this post on your handle, it should not go on client's handle. Right? And we fail there. We try to overcomplicate what you want. Why do you think you like all of you are nicely dressed, have some aesthetics? I'm sure you're not chapri guys or chapri girls, right? Why do you still like chapri content on Instagram? <laughs> Bad font, some random place, no aesthetic, gutter might be flowing in the side, still you're sending it to a friend, <laughs> right? Why do we do that? Because we relate to the content, right? I was in London and uh, visiting there for work. You know, how were the billboards done there? Exactly how these are done. Do you think they're, do you think you need a designer to make these four billboards? Why do these things still connect to you? Because words talk to you. You can relate to them. This is exactly how you feel. So the foremost thing that you need to do is feel the brand and be honest to what you feel for the brand to go and propose to the client okay second bit that works with the client is data now let's say if i tell you i want to sell this watch to you okay so first thing that i would like to say again the same thing it's a nice uh, fuchsia peach pink color watch uh, it's a little different than those blacks and whites black and white watches that you wear in general, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, it looks, it makes you look a little feminine at the same time. It comes from Michael Kors. It's making a statement that Papa Rich hai. Okay. Uh, now, let, let me tell you another point of this watch, right? It's only 200 limited edition pieces of this watch, which are signed by Preeti Zinta herself. Okay. The watch has a key to this which was made by a kid in Ghana who was able to go to MIT at the age of five years and that's the technology he's used. This watch once bought gives you access to 300 clubs across Michael Kors and it will be lost in the next 10 minutes. How many of you want to buy this? Now what did I do? Thank you girl. What did I do here is I looked at my white watch and uh, so I first gave you what your gut felt, right? That's what we were doing in the last exercise. But what we did now is we started adding data to it, right? We started adding emotional value of status to it. And we said, 
okay, you know what, this watch has a lot more value than you can just see in a normal watch. So I added some technology because you guys really get excited by technology. I added some global stories. I added some emotional shit of a kid, okay? And I made you lure that there's only limited edition pieces. And I also told you this offer will only last for 10 minutes. So that's how you tell the client in terms of when you feel what is the core value of it, then you add the jazz on it, right? So you scout for these stories. They don't have to be faked all the time, but you need to scout for these stories. And then take a layer of data. So let's say how Zomato does this. Biryani is sold the most on the 31st night, right? He did the gold graph where pizza was being sold and then eventually biryani got sold the most. So these graphs of Spotify doing a billboard saying that this song was played 109 times. If you're not the one who's listened to the song, then you're definitely not the core TG or something, right? And you start feeling FOMO. Oh, everybody's doing this. I'm not doing this. The beard style typically, right? So that is what you guys need to do. And then like she said, just say with a lot of confidence. Guys, another thing that you need to realize is you don't need to learn this in a book only. Okay? Start observing these things. When you're going across the road, rather than just looking at the person next to you, genuinely just look at a few billboards. See how did they craft that billboard. Actually decode that billboard. Oh, there's a copy. Oh, there's a screen. Oh, they have a URL of a website. Oh, they have an Instagram handle. They have a toll-free number. They have a search box. Oh, that is the new thing that people have started doing. Because you don't need to go back to a lot of research. If you actually decode and construct them into Excel, pointers, buckets, whatever you call them, you'll be able to do a good job. Put yourself in actually show off your consumer. How as a consumer, you would want that product to be. And I think you will start getting the answers. Uh, Google Forms that you keep coming to us for your research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, uh, this brings me to my uh, next question. Uh, with all the diverse experience that you've had uh, working with different uh, segments, the alcohol beverage industry or fashion or lifestyle, uh, and like, you know, uh, managing different set of clientele, uh, what is the one big thing that your clients would always look for? Like one big or another, one, something that you know, ki, this is something which every client wants. Ye to unko batana hai, taki wo sold hai. So it depends on the need of the client at that hour, okay? And that's where I say you need to understand why did that person come to you. So ask the right questions. Okay. And don't be afraid of it. You might look stupid like a donkey in that meeting. It's fine. Okay. At least you'll not look donkey in the next meeting. You may lose that client, but not the next client. Right. So uh, let's say if a client knows that he's looking forward to sales. And that's the core thought of this. A lot of brands will be very clear. I, I'm good enough. I have a great market share. I'm looking forward to build a brand. So there's only a brand problem or a business problem. There's no other problem in life. Right. Now, you've identified this person is looking forward to sale, then you make a thought process of saying how this activity will jump your sale by 10%. Okay. Um, I remember, uh, in fact, the uh, Kinect story, uh, what they did with Future, Bian Future Group, uh, Kishore Biani, right? They wanted to sell half months for Future Group. Okay. And uh, they said, how do we do that? And that's what was the game. So they made it creatively by saying, we'll celebrate no pants day. And Kishore Biani himself, if I've heard the rumors right, wore shorts to office that day. Okay. And then everybody was like, dude, this is and 50% off. Another offer to entice you. 50% off on all shorts. Why don't you wear this? Okay, on no pants day. And obviously, imagine you get this offer. Uh, if I tell you tomorrow in IID, we are celebrating Ravan and then you'll all be in Ravan poses, right? Yeah. Because we want to be enjoying the whole moment. We are a, we are a we are people of small talks. We enjoy that day, right? We want to do something on that day. We need something to on Instagram. Now, what would you put otherwise new? Right? You can't just pop like this all the time, right? So, at the end of the day, if you can think of what is the core objective and then add creativity on top of it, you'll be home. Let's say the brand says, I want only a brand problem to be solved. So, think how a brand problem will be solved, right? What what is that we can do innovatively to bring it? So, um, Manfos is my client. Okay, um, I don't know if you guys guys saw the real gasm video. No, so you know women fake orgasms, right? There's nothing not to know about it. Eighty percent of the women say fake orgasm. We can't come. We can't come. So it's, it's okay, right? So what we did is we created. We took learning from another industry. We went to Sebamed, learned their litmus test process. 
understood that these two chemicals when they come together the color changes right like what sabamet does with other brands ki dove ka sabun pe the color changes it's not great it's harmful and everything so we put that chemical in our condom which when it comes in touch with the orgasm of the women the color of the condom changes so if women comes and the orgasm come in contact with the condom the color will change of the condom otherwise the color will not change so we created real orgasm condoms and we launched them so for for men who can know whether the women is faking or not so that they can do something better to please the women okay now this as an innovative idea client did not believe but client said we want to do something bold and innovative that goes viral by itself the thing this will go viral it went viral we could not promote it also on google and facebook because we had some morning in the video and obviously it did not get promoted and it went viral by itself and we launched this on april fools day <laughs> like literally my clients called me and said shraddha you got me ah what the is wrong with you i was like yeah just having some fun around with the brand right but now the problem statement was that they wanted people to start talking about manfos because they have 40% market share the next biggest condom brand is only at 12% but still when i go to a classroom everybody says i'm using durex and not manfos why because durex is a cooler global brand coming to india and we have the money 10 rupees ka the condom hai it's not too expensive right its absolute value is not high yes manfos is at 4 5 rupees a condom this is double the price of the condom but still it is not too expensive in an absolute value from my pocket right so we had to ensure the brand problem needs to solve maybe a client comes and says that boss my appraisal is in your hands right you need to also appraise the jury manager there no so you need to do everything right for his appraisal so know your audience what is his problem if his appraisal is a problem if award is a problem if brand is a problem or business is a problem solve that for him but ask questions if you do because when clients give brief i'm telling you 80% of the clients give wrong briefs they don't know how to give a brief only so you have to scout the brief ask as many questions as you want and if they can't answer those questions also na i mean because you'll ask a straight question okay tell me what is your brand objective okay tell me what is your target audience they can't answer those questions so you ask questions differently you ask them okay like i asked you what do you think we can buy from her what do you think if she would react at in a situation like this what do you think she will do when she is doing this do you think this will make sense so you think on the toe and start conversing with them and you will be able to understand what is the brief and then work again on that brief the approach has to be different a little diplomatic or maybe twisted to get what you want from them yeah and the example that she just gave is also an another learning for all you guys who think that we want to be creative we want to go into the creative space but uh, you like creativity or data sath mein nahi jata which i think she very like without even uh, conveying it she just said that was data or creativity hand in hand ja sakta hai right so uh, with this uh, i'll go i'll go to the next uh, question and you all just recently expanded uh, into uk market right and uh, we know that uk is already uh, at least few steps ahead when it comes to maybe tech or like you know uh, it's way better in terms of established market when we talk about tech so uh, what do you believe is uh, essential to stand out in dynamic market maybe either data is lacking or tech is lacking in in such situations uh, what's your take on it? so that's sri sri say hi sri <laughs> is my partner and she's the one who's got the uk market under her wing uh, she's the one who's invested to grow the international borders with me um when i uh, was working with her initially again a very interesting story actually i was not working for with her i was working with her dad for one of the brands in india and uh, then i met her uh, and she was shouting and yelling at my team and she was like i don't want to work with you guys you are such bad guys you don't do this then you promise this your timelines are not typical agency problems <laughs> and then i went with my trustworthy and charming face and i said again use my trick give me 3 days you can find another agency on a monday also it's a friday today and if it doesn't get solved in 3 days you are very free to go and choose but give me 3 days like a nice sweet person she looks like she gave me 3 days um and uh, i turned the world upside down in 3 days to deliver right and i did not sit on the work myself but i ensured it is delivered and she got convinced obviously uh, the fact that things can be delivered then another meeting happened where i gave ideas on the toe putting myself as a gut person like saying 
things that are intuitively working for me. She got mesmerized. And then she said, OK, I have a few clients in UK. I would like to outsource the work to you. OK, and I said, yeah, let's do that. Who says no to money? I want to buy the next LVR. Um, and uh, we started working. She asked me to make a pitch for one of the clients. That happened well. The client was floored. She was also mesmerized by my charming attitude and personality. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that went well and then as we ventured into the UK market and then I went to visit also, what I realized is there's nothing different, right? Uh, what works for them is also very intuitively what works for any human beings, right? Just understand their culture and behavior, okay? Just understand a few data points, okay? And then, then pitch them, how would you do that honestly? In a point, a point by point format. One, two, three. So it's nothing different when it comes to technology. It is not different when it comes to data. It is not different when it comes to insight and intuition. It's the same. Like their billboards were like this, yeah? Very pretty. Six billboards done uh, for a hotel where they said, this is not the hotel where we'll ask you to come on time for breakfast. This is not the hotel which will say that no pool after 8 p.m. So what they did is, they did not got any fancy design work done by AI or something. Nice picture, one good copy written, right? Which is the industry gap, which is what we are facing as problems in the other hotels. And put that up on a billboard. And you're home. Right? So you guys need to understand that it's, it's again hard work. And the fact that you will work honestly, and like you guys told me, right, when I started, do you want a sugar coated story or do you want an authentic, honest story? Everyone wants honest stories. That's something they want to buy and sell, right? So that's what you need to do. Cool. Um, one piece of advice that you would um, want to give these guys to have a successful career ahead while these guys are pursuing post graduation right now? Multiple advices. Uh, okay, guys, I genuinely believe. For all due respect, people who are who wants a work-life balance, it's a choice of life that you want to make. But if you want to go from step one to step ten, there's no work-life balance, right? So it's not an eight-hour life, right? So please log. You can party hard also whenever you want to. Then there's no tomorrow. Drink like a fish on water. Um, I'm not promoting anything wrong, huh? <laughs> uh, like fish drinks water, right? <laughs> um, second is take decisions. They might be wrong. I might have fallen into wrong hands by leaving my family at that time. I literally left my family. My parents said, you can't come back home if you don't want to come back home now. Right? And I said, that's fine. That's my decision. Right? And my, my brother was literally like, you should have been dead by now rather than being my sister. Right? And, and he loves me and I love him too till now. Okay? We have a lot. We have a great bond today. But those are moments, right? You say things in the heat of the moment. But those were your decisions. Good, bad, ugly, they are your decision. You'll never say in a meeting room or in the evening sitting on a terrace saying that, oh, you know, I was forced to do this. This is his problem. Because, you know, as human, if you notice this, we have this problem. We don't want to put ourselves in the situation where we say this is something that has happened to me because of me. So we start finding reasons. You know, there's typically, you know, why this quote came in? Jo bhi hota hai, achche ke liye hota hai. Ya Bhagwan ne nahi bulaya hoga. I don't know where is this coming from, but it is actually just meant to put the problem on somebody else. Because you don't want to feel like you are the problem, right? So these quotes were made in that perspective that you don't want a human being to feel that it is your problem and just look past that and move on. So take decisions and your decisions. Don't put your decisions on someone else. It's not somebody else's problem, right? Because whether whatever is the result of that, it is your decision and you're not able to move up after that. Okay. Third is you need to obviously start feeling a lot more intuitive about your decisions. When we say another, yeah, it's my gut feeling. It's not wrong to do something like that. Yes, you'll do all your research. In a meeting room, let me be very honest, at that moment, whatever you've prepared on the slides might not be helpful, right? And if you can't play by your gut that time, and you, a lot of kids, when they're interviewing, they're saying, I'm feeling nervous, and I prepared so much, but I can't do, I, I don't know what to say, can I have some water? And like, just calm down. Forget what you prepared. Like I, on the way, I heard the questions that he is going to ask me. Every interview has of questions, right? And I thought the kind of answers, but I'm telling you, none of the answers matches what I thought. I'll tell you guys. Okay. 
uh, because you can't rato what life taught you, right? And you need to be honest and authentic. What can happen max out of this meeting? He'll make some viral clip out of me, put some two horns on me, make some mustache out of my picture, put it on social media. That's the worst. It's fine. How does it make a difference? He's not going to go to the yacht and have a Cosmo with me. Right? It's my problem, right? I need to figure out how do I want to live my life? What do I want to achieve? So focus on your goals. Your goals are not somebody else's goal. And nobody is interested in seeing you winning. Except for a few good teachers. Who wants to then put your photo on the board saying that my school se pass away. <laughs> yeah, but uh, very, very important. Guys, it's your goal. Everybody wants to pull you down. You know, why do moms come? Aray, mera bita, itna mehnat kar raha hai. Babla hi ho jayega, itni padhai karke. Itna kaam koi karta ki tere boss to kutta hai. Chhod de naukare. Everybody wants to pull you down. Nobody will come and say, no, you need to slog. Do it. Doesn't matter. Show up. Go to the office the next day. Right? Behave yourself. Nobody does that. Because nobody can understand your goal and your pain. So work on that, guys. Again, very nice, uh, rightly, and uh, all these three advice that she was giving, uh, it's very important because at the end of the day, you have to be happy. And if you're happy, nothing, nothing great than that, right? Cool. Uh, let's take questions from them. Yeah. Asan push, huh? Yeah, please. <laughs> Yeah, there are two schools of thought and nothing is wrong with any of those. I believe in dirtying my hands to know what I am doing to go and pitch to someone else. Because then somebody else will say, ma'am, it doesn't happen to me. I have to tell him that it will be 2 Right? So I believe in that kind of a school of thought. And it worked when I was small. Right? As I've scaled. And I think it was also a deterrent in my growth. Let me be very honest. I've been at the same employee number for the last two years. I've not been able to scale except for the fact that I'm looking forward to scale this year. And it will happen with international borders and new verticals that have opened this year. But for two years, I was stagnant. Why? Because I was holding everything so close to me. I was approving everything. I was looking into everything. Right? Um, so, you need to choose what works at what stage in your life. Right? It, again, your decision. Good, bad, ugly, it's your decision again. But uh, I think my mode of working was like that that time. I also didn't have the money to hire somebody great. Uh, and I learned it. I was cheaper than a market person. And uh, that worked for me that time. But yes, if I had would have been at scale, I would have hired someone and then would have put that person in front of me. So. Yes, anyone else? Yep, he went first. I'm running through this situation right now. Um, it depends on how desperate are you for that client, right? That logo or that idea. So if you genuinely want to execute that and you want to have, or you want to have that logo on your kitty, you let go of the money, right? But if the idea isn't that great, neither the logo is that great. Yes, please. So, um, you rightly said, so let's say I work on a fashion brand, it comes innately to us as women, beauty brands, home brands, you know, easy for us to crack. Auto brand, I don't understand shit out of it. And I work for Marcus who's again done like some brilliant award winning campaigns. So I chose to be on the consumer side. So what happens is now a lot of things we buy, we actually don't know why are we buying those products. Think we're just buying. So you can play around that space of what is the consumer looking forward to buying that product and that's where data and research comes in. Let's say all of that is also done. You've done your data research, you've understood the consumer, you've sold the idea, but it is not still innately coming to you, right? Then you go back home and say, how much money do you have in your pocket? Do you have another job? If you don't, please go back to work again the next day. You have no choice, right? But if you think that you, it's still not 
if you don't feel like getting up in the morning and going to office every day, no, yar, there's something wrong with the job that you're doing. See, you should work on that brand for once because you don't know what life will throw at you at that time, right? But you can't do this every day, right? Or let's say three projects in a row with IID and you were supposed to work on brands, let's say sexual wellness brag and you don't like right? So what will you do? I don't want to work with it. So you, then you need to go back to your mentor and say that boss, it, it is not working for me. Okay, I would like to change my brand. I would like to go to this brand. I've already tried one brand for you because you gave me this brand last time this happened. And this time I want to go with a brand that's something I genuinely innately love. And you give me this brand again with a lot of confidence and swag. Yeah, you give me this brand and you see the results. And uske baad tu ne aake mere haat nahi chum lena mere project pe. So mera naam badal diyo. So when you say something like that, no, the the mentor will also say, "Ha yaar, ladke mein dam hai, kar lega kuch to." So I think that's it. Guys, and the third piece, let's say if you're not an IID, but you're running an organization, you've got a brand that you don't like working on, then hire someone to do that brand, right? Because you can't lose the money. So you need to understand what situation, how should you be doing it, et cetera, to work around it. Yeah? Awesome. Yes. Good question. What got me passionate about women's health? I don't think I'm very healthy. I have 100 problems in my body. Abhi mujhe yaad aajayega, teen test karane hai. Um, I think health is very important. I'll, I'll tell you a story, okay? Um, I bought my second luxury bag, uh, Louis Vuitton, and I got that bag and I was very excited. First when I got Fendi, yellow color, I hardly use it. Then I got a, like a brown typical monogram. Uh, brand of Louis Vuitton, right? And uh, that day I was not feeling healthy about my body, right? Something was happening inside me. I came back, I was very excited, took some pictures, came back home and put that bag nicely in the dust cloth in my wardrobe. I was lying on bed, I'm not healthy at all. And I looked at that bag and I was like, this bag ka kya right? And that got me thinking that you need to live that life to look healthy. Okay, um, and somewhere, no, uh, I was reading Instagram. I'm sure you guys are also doing a lot of research on Instagram, not droom scrolling. Uh, and this guy said that the biggest fashion tip that I can give you is being healthy. And I genuinely realized that when I see Italian guys wearing anything, my eyes pop out, right? Irrespective of whether they're wearing H&M pantaloons or actually a mess, I will still go on a bar and have a nice drink with them. So I think uh, it's very, very important to be healthy for yourself to enjoy whatever you achieve in life. So the day I achieved my bag, the day I was supposed to go on a health, for an award on a stage or address you guys, if I would not be feeling healthy right now, I, I would be obviously feeling that pain. I can't be myself to express what I want to do for you guys in this panel discussion also, right? Or this uh, session that I'm having with you. How can men take any step in a workplace uh, for women to be healthy and behave healthy is constantly push them. Okay. Uh, don't tell them to moti hai Saand ho gai hai. Thik hai. But let's say Sunny um, is a health freak now. She had lost some 180 kgs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not 180 kgs, but I don't remember how many kgs, 35, 35 kgs. She's very body conscious now. She eats hardly anything. Um, she and my mom, they're two people only married. I'm eating anything, they'll take the plate out of my hand. Like, why are you eating this? Right? And when a man does this, pati karke dikha de. You'll be like, to the moti ladki ani pasand hai. Ab tujhe mere weight se problem hai. So, as a man, because we've grown in an environment which have been patriarchal, right? You just need to be a little sensitive doing something for the women. So, instead of taking the hand plate away from the women or telling them that, boss, you don't look great, you need to tell them, okay, let's compete tomorrow. Okay? I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to send you my steps. And if you don't send me your steps, you're buying me lunch. Right? And that competition spirit in women 
is so fucking crazy. It will work. हाँ आग लगा देंगे. Seriously, बिजली गिरे ले. So I think that can work. Try. Maybe something else works also. You should ask the women only. What works for you, D? Yep. Anything else, guys? I can evaluate good ideas, right? right? Read a lot. See, something comes to us naturally. Like I am a natural on the toe thinker. So I'll sit in a room and I can actually give you five ideas then and there. Okay? It is not somebody's, everybody's cup of tea. Okay? And you don't have to unnecessarily beyond a point push yourself into something that is not natural for you. Okay? So let's say if, some, which is something which is very natural for you is some business sense. Okay, you understand logic, you understand distribution, you understand data, you understand media. So, imagine a media guy, you know, and they make more money than creative people. Let me be very honest with you. So, you need to understand what excites you, an award or money in your bank account, right? And let's say if there's a client who says that, boss, I need to um, sell... Like, I'll tell you what, a tequila guy came to me and he said that I'm looking forward to sell a, a social media agency, a PR agency, and I need a website design agency, an SEO agency. I said, Bhai, kitne dabbe bechne? And he was a Mexican, okay, Marco. And he said, I want to sell 20,000 caskets. I said, that I can sell door to door. Why do you need to have 100 such services to do this? Right? So now when I said that number and I said that I can figure out a strategy of distribution, all of you, um, have you had Priya Gold Biscuits? Yeah. You know how much crore is that brand for? 3000 crores. Right? What is the ad that you liked from Priya Gold? So why are they selling so much? Distribution strategy. Right? Access. It's available in various places. Right? So you need to be you're pushing yourself in a direction which does not make sense because you're thinking creativity in that direction. And definitely in the fifth generation is working with us now, right? And it is not that because he's creative. He literally haggled with us for a packaging which was not even funny. But that uncle is, I've never met him, it's all due respect. Uh, but he's making a lot of money, yeah? And let's be honest, he's not done a great ad, but he knows what sells his business, right? His vision was very clear. I want to make an empire that can make money out of what I'm doing. You need to be clear about what is that you want after 10 years. You can say that I want to be known the best creative guy in the room. Or you're saying that I want to be known as the best businessman. Right? Is money exciting you or an award in your hand exciting you? Right? So if you can space that out, you'll be home. Way more clarity as to what you want. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Yes, please. You pray you don't get an interview with me. Okay. No, no, I'm just kidding. I don't take interviews any which way. Uh, so, I don't know what is the interviewee, interviewer in my office doing when he's checking you because he will be actually mapping you to the role that he's hiring for. I think, uh, but what it works is one, you should be able to give the right thinking. So, take any technical case study and say this was the problem. This is how we solved it. This is what was the creative and innovation behind it or numbers behind it and this was the result. That showcases that okay you did it right in terms of solving your last project. Second, I think the fact when people come as intern, right and I am only talking about interns. The fact that you are jumping onto any situation to latch on. Saying that yaar, main aisa nahi ki mujhe sirf client servicing karni hai, yaar, mujhe sirf copy karni hai. Ab jo bolo gaya, mujhe bolo ke late ne ko me late jaunga. Right? Is, is genuinely needed because today if you look at social media also, that's the reason offline agencies could not survive and digital agencies came into place and digital agencies are not able to survive and you have content agencies now. Right? Because we are not ready to change. So if a person comes to me and I keep telling this as a designer or a copywriter, they are so susceptible to saying that I don't want to be in front of the camera, I don't want to do a video, I will only do a photoshop design. It's a problem, right? Oh, I don't want to write copy. Abhi, yeah, chat GPT use kar le. Lik le copy kya ho gaya? English hi to hai. Grammar li dal le. Isse upar thod na English likhni hai. Kaun sa wo influencer ke post mein English bilkul thik likhi vithi? Right? 
so at the end of the day you need to be very open to what you are trying to achieve as an intern right and when you become an intern uh say yes to as much thing think of any agency as a sports academy you have to get up at 4 am you have to run the same course same uploading you have to sweat you have to bleed you have to cry if you've not gone through all of that you've not lived an agency life right so i think these two are very important things 100% i agree to this right because that's constantly something that i keep feeling and then that don't say no just go for it do yeah. it yeah it's a playground make mistakes because once you have made that mistake ensure you don't repeat the same yeah. mistake again because that's the learning and that will take you to the next level and once you made a mistake now don't lie come to your senior tell them I'm and i will do anything to make things change things from here right like i tell my team members you you stand i will cover up for you i've fought with clients i've shouted at clients i've left the room i've left the client for my team but if that employee makes that mistake again then everything that i've done to the client i do to them <laughs> yeah so mistake once is okay but twice is a challenge unless you become like a nice pretty face and say i'm sorry <laughs> yeah all right uh so with this guys we move towards the end of the session uh, i'm going to uh, actually have prepared some uh, rapid fire questions for her and it's very interesting um really she'll give point blank answers mazaa <laughs> aayega so let's hear what she has to say one word two words three words one word yeah okay okay first thing that you do when you wake up i go to the loo Uh, one value you strongly follow. Whatever happens to you is ten percent. How you react to it is ninety percent. A brand you admire the most. Burger King um, and Mankind Pharma, Man First Condom. Okay. Favorite marketing campaign, not your own. Uh, I love all Burger King campaigns. I think they do a great job when they tease McDonald's the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one book every marketer should read. I don't. I'm not into books, but I'm trying to read this book called Traction. and i've only finished 3 pages in 3 months <laughs> okay uh, one app you can't live without instagram if not advertising then what i i'm good with design aesthetics i want to i can become a nice real estate interior designer or an architect or something nice. uh morning person or night owl morning sometimes i feel like i'm a zenzi i'll do night owls and i'll feel like uh, i'm i'll go back to a morning person yeah creativity or data both Uh, best piece of advice you ever received okay the recent one was given by my husband that you're too loud and uh, anybody can judge that you don't know finance so this year i'm learning finance wow uh, one sentence um, the future of digital marketing is future of digital marketing is uh, honest authentic and uh, cringe <laughs> <laughs> i saw something called as takli chudel <laughs> Ganji Chudel. The team was showing me for some ideas on some client. I was like, I can't relate to this. I can't do this. Great. Thank you so much. It was a lovely session. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.